In this segment, we will try to prove that if the inverse of A exists, that it is unique. Although I posed a question that is it unique, uh, it, yes, it is unique, but we need to now prove it that the inverse of uh, A matrix, if it exists, that it is unique. Uh, let's suppose we have A matrix of which we, uh, uh, the A matrix is given here. So let B be inverse of A. And then what we're going to do is we're going to assume C be inverse of A as well. And what that means that we are doing this by contradiction, by saying that hey, uh, we, uh, we are uh, we are uh, saying that hey, B is B is unique. But if B is not unique, then there should be another matrix C, which should be also inverse of A. And the way to show that whether B is unique or not is by showing that B and C are the same. Now let's go ahead and show, go ahead and use this to prove it. We know that B times A is the identity matrix. And how do we know that? We know that because B is the inverse of A. That, that's from the definition itself. And what I want to do is I'm going to multiply both of these sides of this by C. So we're going to say I times C. Now, what is uh, uh, A times C going to give me? Because I just said, that, hey, let C be the inverse of A as well. If C is the inverse of A, then A times C or C times A is also going to be the identity matrix. So B times I will be equal to I times C. But we know that if we want to multiply a matrix by the identity matrix and the multiplication is allowed, which is in this case because both of these matrices are n by n and these are also n by n. So the B matrix multiplied by the identity matrix will be B itself. And the identity matrix multiplied by C matrix will be C itself. So this is showing us that hey, B and C are the same. So which basically shows that hey, uh, that if there is a matrix A and there it has an inverse, that inverse is unique. And that's the end of this segment.